Demario, is there anything now with this defense that you don't know? I mean, is it truly everything second nature to you right now? Uh, I think at this point, you know, I got it down, down pat, uh, about as best as you can get it. But I mean, it's always little things that you can add. We we, we put in some different things in the off season uh, that we sharpening now and. Um, I think we kind of probably got about three more installs. And so just the more and more you get through it, you go through it, the better you become, more accustomed that you, you, you have at it. And uh, I think that's, that's the key to playing fast and to get it down, make it second nature so you can focus on what the offense is doing. And tomorrow, how much pride do you take that, uh, I know you and Alex has alone and AJ Klein, I know you'll take pride running down the field with the receivers, but being able to be right there in coverage, you know, 25, 30 yards uh, down the field. I think it's a space. This is it's a spatial game now. Uh, you have to have hybrid linebackers that you know can get the job done in the box and make plays 15 plus yards down the field um, because the tight ends are running deeper, running backs are running deeper, and every now and then you may get on a wide receiver in the slot or something like that. And so it's just the nature of the, biz of the, of the business, and uh, it comes with the, the position. Now you have those responsibilities, and so you just got to make sure that that you're prepared to do it and know where to get to those spots. DeMario, they've had fan, fans come up to us on the uh, Saints radio and say, well, DeMario Davis, to me, he's, I know you're your own man, uh, but they kind of view the great linebackers we've had here, Sam Mills, uh, Jonathan Billman. And they kind of even say now, because they're more familiar than Sean Payton, that DeMario Davis is our new Jonathan Billman. you got to take a lot of pride in that, that the fans view you that way. Man, I mean, I got so much respect for guys like that, you know, uh, the guys that are in, in Saints glory and, uh, Saints Hall of Fame, and uh, you know I got a tremendous amount of respect for those guys and the work that they put in. So to even be in the same conversation, you know, is, is an honor. Um, I know the game is the game is uh, you know a lot different now. Linebackers are, are asked to do a lot more stuff, especially in the coverage game now, and uh, being you know going wider and deeper down the field. And so uh, yeah, I'm just. I try to focus on being as best I can in this area. And at the same time, I have a lot of appreciation and respect and utmost respect and number uh, praise for, for the guys who came in front of me. Sean was just saying how a lot of teams may try to save those um, reviews for the second half now that pass interference is reviewable. So just being a player on the field, how do you guys deal with that? Maybe a first half play you may want to have review, maybe not be, because obviously you got to think about you know, just all four quarters of the game. How do you think that's going to play a strategy now? Well, I think that, that goes a lot more to, to, the, to the head coach than anything. You know, the challenge has always been controlled by the head coach. And, I mean, he's listening inside his head coach, I mean, inside his headset to the guys up top. And he'll know, you know, how, how to best use that. I don't think as far as us, it affects us any different. You know, if we get the call, we get it. If we don't get the call, we don't get it. You know, and it, and it kind of goes both ways. Sometimes defense, you can get away with one. Sometimes offense gets away uh, with a lot. <laughs> so... Uh, I, but I think that's on the coach as far as how they want to review it, and um, you know you can't let that affect your game. Demar, how has it changed? Um, looking at now RPOs and you, know, you got Lamar Jackson, those type of quarterbacks, Taysom Hill. That to honor that quarterback truly as a runner now, RG3 and all goes back. You're probably familiar. That even gives the linebackers sometimes or assignment uh, more responsibility. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, it's, it's tough in the time you got the extra dynamic of a quarterback that can run. But, it, it, you know, um, what really helps them is they're able to keep plays alive longer. So it's not as much as you fear them running down the field um, because most time when they get down the field, they slide anyways. But as much as they can keep plays al um, alive longer, so you have to turn and find an open man that, that may be turned up the field wide open. Um, but even more than the scrambling quarterback is the run pass option is that they can fake a run and it looks like a run. The linemen are coming downfield. The only people know it's a pass is the quarterback and the, and the wide receiver. And so, you know, we've been trying to push and say, man, you got to call that flag because you got a lineman down the field blocking and the quarterback pulls it and throws it. So for a linebacker, you can't get a read on that. You know, usually, you know, you know in prior times, if the, run, if the lineman come down the field, you know it's a run. If they standing straight up, you know it's a pass. But now they have a run play call. The only people know it's a pass is the quarterback and the receiver. And the lineman may be three yards down the field and he throw a slant route, but the linebacker is at the line of scrimmage. So it's hard on us. And so we just hope we get a few of those calls, but who knows. You mentioned that how much linebacker are asked, <laughs> the consistency with the group, most of the guys are back. Does that allow you guys to scheme things up a little differently, more complicated, do anything differently this year than maybe you did last year? So that, ask, that, ask that one more time? So you get, you're very consistent with the guys you have back. Does that yeah. allow you guys to do anything different, scheme anything different, more complicated this year than maybe you did last year? 
Well, yeah, I think I think we have a, uh, a closer bond. You know, some guys have been been together for for three years now, and some of us, most of us, two years, and uh, under the same coach. And so we have a really a really close bond, not just on the field but off the field. But I think that just kind of allows us to think along the same patterns. A lot of times we may change the blitz in the middle of the play without even saying it or communicating with each other because we both kind of think along the same plane. And uh, you know, whether it's two of us or three of us on the field, we kind of find a groove of just kind of understanding how a guy plays, how a guy thinks, and that just puts us one step ahead, I feel like, of the offense. So that unspoken Last communication, question, do you think that that's, that's overrated, underrated in the NFL, not talked about enough? How important is that? that, that? Oh, chemistry, chemistry is uh, probably not uh, talked about or taken as seriously as it should be. You know, I think, you know, that – well, as well as we played last year defensively, I think a lot of that had to do with just our chemistry all around, and uh, especially in our room, and then you know to to the whole defense and the team. You know, chemistry is what allows teams to really gel on the field. You know, just guys knowing where certain guys are going to be, and that comes from knowing where guys going to be in the locker room and what he's going to be doing in the locker room. Like I probably tell you about 15 guys what they're in the locker room doing right now, and then that translates to the field. Demar, you have one more. Uh, Evan lied to you. Uh, well, what, what about your journey? I mean, to me, that's the story, a great story. Mississippi, you end up at Arkansas State, and to be where you're at right now, you have to be enjoying this process and really proud of where you came from, where you're at right now, and going forward. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just blessed. I'm just blessed, man. Um, not just my journey of, you know, uh, come, being born to a single mom and, you know, not having much growing up, but even more so just falling into a lot of the wrong stuff. You know, I mean, I got expelled from school in high school. I went to jail my first year in college, and then my sophomore year, my sophomore year in college, you know, giving myself to the Lord and understanding that football, learning football ain't for my glory, but about his glory. And that really just tra transformed the way I thought about things and made me a better player, a better person, a better leader all around. And so I, I can't help but give him glory and credit for that because and who knows, man, I could have easily been dead or in jail a long time ago. All right, thanks, Demar. Thanks, yeah.